Coming in at under five feet tall stands one of the biggest icons to ever do it. With five albums and four mixtapes under her belt, runway show appearances, TV and movie appearances, Little Kim has put in the work. She would become one of the most important figures in hip hop. Let's give Little Kim her roses. Lil' Kim grew up in Brooklyn, in Bedford-Stuyvesant. She met Biggie as a teenager and she attended the same school as Foxy Brown and Nas at Brooklyn College Academy. Kim got her start in the industry at 16 years old. Biggie had just signed a deal with Bad Boy and brought everybody with him. Before long, we would hear Lil' Kim's voice on Biggie's Ready to Die album. When Junior Mafia dropped, Lil' Kim was the obvious standout of the group. She was something that the industry hadn't seen before. She was rapping as hard as Biggie and her idols MC Light or Salt and Pepper, but she was just so raw with it. Her open sexual talk as well as her hard lyrics was a shock to the industry, which laid the groundwork for other female MCs to be free from what was acceptable in the 90s. She had some help from Biggie, but she was also trusted to handle the writing of some of her initial hits on her own as well. Hardcore came out in a year crowded with some of the biggest albums we had ever heard of and ended up amongst them. When Kim came on and Big Mama thing, we honestly wasn't ready. We were treated to music videos for no time. Nothing make a woman feel better than Berettas and Amarettas. Crush on you. Crush on you. Hey, yo, shorty, won't you go get a bag of the lethal? And the Not Tonight remix. Like a penny with the hole in it, y'all yeah, just hopeless. The songs that didn't get videos were what everybody was talking about, though. The vibe you got from songs like Spin a Little Dough, Drugs, Queen Bitch, and the original Not Tonight is literally the blueprint for most female MCs from then until now. In 1997, Lil' Kim lost her mentor to Notorious B.I.G., but her star continued to rise. She became a fashion icon with the over-the-top fits. As she worked on her album, she did a lot of features that are considered hip-hop essentials to this day. It's all about the Benjamins. Wanna bumble with the B, huh? I Can Love You. Who you loving? Who you wanna be hugging? Money, Power, Respect. Money, Power, Respect. Eating life. And a Choir Storm remix. Hot damn ho, here we go again are staples that people of all ages can recognize. Kim's second album, The Notorious K.I.M., had a lot of fans curious about the sound. An early leak of songs had fans worried that she was going as some called Disney. 12 songs hit the internet, causing Kim to record 11 new songs in three weeks. When the album was released, it was a bit divisive amongst fans. A few songs were gems like No Matter What They Say, no matter what people say Aunt Dot, and Hold On, which gave a little bit of insight to her relationship with Biggie. Kim had two really big features around this time as well, on Wait a Minute with Ray J, it's the little one and I'm not bad well. And Ladies Marmalade, which was a huge record. I'm saying why spend mine when I can spend yours. La Bella Mafia sees Kim without any of the bad boy sound in a return to form in a lot of ways. This album was well received by fans this time around with joints like the jump off. Black Barbie dressed in Bugatti. Oh. I'm trying to leave in somebody's Ferrari. And the magic stick getting a single treatment, as well as album cuts This Is a Warning and Come Back for You. My fans across the world, I came back for you. Getting a lot of mileage from fans. Little Kim's real return to form came when her back was against the wall. While facing jail time, Kim put together one of her strongest bodies of work with the naked truth. The Source magazine at the time, with all its credibility still intact, gave The Naked Truth a coveted five mics. The album was no joke. If you don't know, you may want to take an hour and 16 minutes to get acquainted. The singles for this album were Woe, I done been through it all, shootouts and fist fight. Spell check, don't know you do it like I D I D, and Light Is Up. I come from the singles were fire, but they don't account for the songs like Slippin', Dirty, Last Day, and Give Me That. The album released the same week Lil' Kim reported to prison. We wouldn't get any new music from Kim until 2008 after parting ways with Atlantic Records to go independent. We got her first mixtape, which would be called Mrs. Goat. Kim tapped into her street sound that was part of her original appeal and showed that prison didn't slow her down a bit. Kim will follow that up with three more mixtapes over the next nine years, each with gems here and there. In 2019, Lil' Kim would return with her first album since 2005 with nine. The album was originally released as two parts, but the final result was nine total songs on a final version. The album may not have hit Kim's expectations, but there's no denying that her pen was still sharp. Gems such as Pray For Me, Found You, and Bad got some fans buzzing. 
Aside from the music, Kim has been an ambassador to many brands as well as creating businesses, TV shows, and a lot of philanthropy work. Little Kim's impact on the music industry cannot be understated. You can see pieces of Kim spread all across the industry since her debut. She said what she wanted, stood by her word, loyal, creative, innovative, and gave birth to a whole style in the industry. Kim will always be one of the originators and a key shifter in hip-hop. This is Dame Diddy giving Lil' Kim her roses.